chapter 16. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. She had a female Egyptian servant whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, Behold now, the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my servant. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. So after Abram had lived ten years in the land of Canaan, Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar the Egyptian, her servant, and gave her to Abram, her husband, as a wife. And he went into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress. And Sarai said to Abram, May the wrong done to me be on you. I gave my servant to your embrace, and when she saw that she had conceived, she looked on me with contempt. May the Lord judge between you and me. But Abram said to Sarai, Behold, your servant is in your power. Do to her as you please. Then Sarai dealt harshly with her, and she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found her by a spring of water in the wilderness, the spring on the way to Shur. And he said, Agar, servant of Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, Return to your mistress and submit to her. The angel of the Lord also said to her, I will surely multiply your offspring so that they cannot be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are pregnant and shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has listened to your affliction. He shall be a wild donkey of a man, his hand against everyone, and everyone's hand against him, and he shall dwell over against all his kinsmen. So she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are a God of seeing, for she said, Truly here I have seen him who looks after me. Therefore the well was named Bir Lahairoi. It lies between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bore Abram a son. And Abram called the name of his son, whom Hagar bore, Ishmael. Abram was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. Chapter 15 Then Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat. He answered them, and why do you break the commandment of God for the sake of your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, If anyone tells his father or his mother, What you would have gained from me is given to God, he need not honor his father. So for the sake of your tradition, you have made void the word of God. You hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you when he said, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the people to him and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth, this defiles a person. Then the disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be rooted up. Let them alone. They are blind guides. And if the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain the parable to us. And he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth passes into the stomach and is expelled? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this defiles a person. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. And Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. 
but he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Jesus went on from there and walked beside the Sea of Galilee, and he went up on the mountain and sat down there. And great crowds came to him, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and they put them at his feet, and he healed them. So that the crowd wondered when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they glorified the God of Israel. Then Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I am unwilling to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, Where are we to get enough bread in such a desolate place to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven, and a few small fish. And directing the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds, and they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces left over. Those who ate were four thousand men besides women and children. And after sending away the crowds, he got into the boat and went to the region of Magadan. Chapter 5 now there arose a great outcry of the people and of their wives against their Jewish brothers. For there were those who said, With our sons and our daughters we are many, so let us get grain that we may eat and keep alive. There were also those who said, We are mortgaging our fields, our vineyards, and our houses to get grain because of the famine. And there were those who said, We have borrowed money for the king's tax on our fields and our vineyards. Now our flesh is as the flesh of our brothers, our children, are as their children. Yet we are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves, and some of our daughters have already been enslaved. But it is not in our power to help it, for other men have our fields and our vineyards. I was very angry when I heard their outcry and these words. I took counsel with myself and I brought charges against the nobles and the officials. I said to them, You are exacting interest, each from his brother. And I held a great assembly against them and said to them, We, as far as we are able, have brought back our Jewish brothers who have been sold to the nations, but you even sell your brothers that they may be sold to us. They were silent and could not find a word to say. So I said, The thing that you are doing is not good. Ought you not to walk in the fear of our God to prevent the taunts of the nations our enemies? Moreover, I and my brothers and my servants are lending them money and grain. Let us abandon this exacting of interest. Return to them this very day their fields, their vineyards, their olive orchards, and their houses, and the percentage of money, grain, wine, and oil that you have been exacting from them. Then they said, We will restore these and require nothing from them. We will do as you say. And I called the priests and made them swear to do as they had promised. I also shook out the fold of my garment and said, so may God shake out every man from his house and from his labor who does not keep this promise. So may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord, and the people did as they had promised. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the twentieth year to the thirty-second year of Artaxerxes the king, twelve years, neither I nor my brothers ate the food allowance of the governor. The former governors who were before me laid heavy burdens on the people and took from them for their daily ration forty shekels of silver. Even their servants lorded it over the people. But I did not do so because of the fear of God. 
I also persevered in the work on this wall, and we acquired no land, and all my servants were gathered there for the work. Moreover, there were at my table 150 men, Jews and officials, besides those who came to us from the nations that were around us. Now what was prepared at my expense for each day was one ox and six choice sheep and birds, and every ten days all kinds of wine in abundance. Yet for all this I did not demand the food allowance of the governor, because the service was too heavy on this people. Remember for my good, O oh my God, all that I have done for this people. Chapter 15 But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. So being sent on their way by the church, they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, describing in detail the conversion of the Gentiles, and brought great joy to all the brothers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter. And after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you, that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us. And he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we have been able to bear? But we believe that we will be saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus, just as they will. And all the assembly fell silent, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related what signs and wonders God had done through them among the Gentiles. After they finished speaking, James replied, Brothers, listen to me. Simeon has related how God first visited the Gentiles to take from them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return, and I will rebuild the tent of David that has fallen. I will rebuild its ruins, and I will restore it, that the remnant of mankind may seek the Lord. And all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who makes these things known from of old. Therefore my judgment is that we should not trouble those of the Gentiles who turn to God, but should write to them to abstain from the things polluted by idols, and from sexual immorality, and from what has been strangled, and from blood. For from ancient generations Moses has had in every city those who proclaim him, for he has read every Sabbath in the synagogues. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders with the whole church to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas, called Barsabbas, and Silas, leading men among the brothers, with the following letter. The brothers, both the apostles and the elders, to the brothers who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, greetings. Since we have heard that some persons have gone out from us and troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, Although we gave them no instructions, it has seemed good to us, having come to one accord, to choose men and send them to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you the same things by word of mouth. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay on you no greater burden than these requirements, that you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. So when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter, and when they had read it, they rejoiced because of its encouragement. And Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, encouraged and strengthened the brothers with many words. 
And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by the brothers to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaim the word of the Lord and see how they are. Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John called Mark. But Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there arose a sharp disagreement, so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing me home safely from Moscow, Idaho. And oh, Father, just, uh, it's just so, <laughs> I have no words. I actually have no words for how amazing your provision and your guidance are. Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for this family, this group, these friends of mine, brothers and sisters that gather here. Whether I'm here or not, it's amazing, Lord. I thank you so much that I can come back uh, to this familiar time in this familiar place. Thank you for this time. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Hey, hello, hello. It's me. Yes, I'm here. I'm back. <laughs> Tell us all about it. Hi, Mom. Love you. Yeah, you want me to tell you all about it. Okay. Do I do the Bible first or do I do the update first? Mm. Goodness. Let me do the Bible first. Okay. Bible, Bible, Bible. All right. You want to report? Yes. You want to report? I could take a half an hour and do it. You know what? Uh, tomorrow, I don't know if I'm anybody scheduled in the chat session with me tomorrow. Maybe I'll do the whole thing on a longer update because I, I got a lot of updates but i'll give you an update here at the end but let's do the, the scripture um we're just gonna start with matthew uh you know what, let me put the banner up sometimes i need that just for reference where is it yeah i didn't really have any comments in 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 genesis other than you know the the idea that we So God had promised Abraham, right, uh, uh, offspring more numerous than the sands of the sea and the stars of the sky. And Sarah gets in her head, I can't have babies. God, you're wrong, <laughs> essentially, right? I can't have babies for some reason. God, you're wrong. And she's like, oh, no, maybe God's right and he needs to use me to bring that about, uh, right? Here's one of my maidservants. All right, maybe this... You know, God does use us like that sometimes. God, does, it is, a, uh, we are God's servants and we are the hand of God, but sometimes we get in our own heads and trying to figure it, try and figure it out for him. And, and lo, lo and behold, we have uh, uh, centuries and millennia of hostility between the, the seed of Ishmael and the seed of Isaac, right? Because of our own interference with what? god was doing so that's what we have uh, but god did promise hagar herself because her child was abraham's child that god's promise does apply to her all right so god's populating the earth keeping his promise all right matthew uh, so here we have pharisees calling out jesus uh for well, his disciples, yeah, God must have laughed. <laughs> um, so Jesus, Jesus, the Pharisees are like, why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? It's like they can't even hear themselves. They can't even hear how ridiculous they sound. The traditions of the elders, why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? These Pharisees sound like, like the woke crowd, you know, blaming 
you know, just hurling blames. Why do you not do what we say, what we humans have instituted? Well, you know, it's like the American Medical Association has changed the definition of, you know, mental illness so that now, uh, you know, dysphoria, you know, body dysphoria is now normal. It's not an abnormal, right? They, they, they go in and they change, they change the definition of vaccine. They literally changed the, officially changed the definition of vaccine so that this thing that they made would actually qualify, right? So the traditions of man, why are you just dis disobeying what we humans have figured out? Why are your disciples disobeying what we have determined uh, is, is holy and pious? And Jesus, what does he do? Verse, uh, I love it, right? This kind, calm, gentle, you know, almost timid Jesus, soft-spoken Jesus, right? There's some people, I'm afraid, too many people have that view of Jesus, that he's this soft-spoken, oh, I don't want to, you know, you just love one another, love, love, lay down your life, turn the other cheek and pray for those who persecute you, etc. He shouts at him. He shouts at him. There's an exclamation point. Verse seven, you hypocrites right? It has an exclamation point there. He's in their face. You brood of vipers. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say uh, that for so long, I, you know, when he says brood of vipers, not here, but he refers to the Pharisees as you brood of vipers. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I didn't actually fully understand the significance of that and how it was heard by the Pharisees and how they received it. I thought, oh, it's just kind of a, a colloquialism, right? It's just something that they'd say. You brood of vipers, something out to put them down. But, sorry, it's way deeper than that. Brood of vipers. Satan is a serpent. And they're children of their father. <laughs> the brood are the offspring Right, so they, he's, he's when he says brood of vipers, he's pointing out to them very clearly that you are the offspring of Satan. I'm embarrassed to say that that little connection I only made that recently when I heard somebody say it, like Doug Wilson. So, but he yells at them. He yells in their faces. Uh, love it. Um, it's it's this is the contrast between the, the teachings. Uh, they were teaching the doctrines of man as commandments, right? So they're saying, why do your disciples not obey the traditions uh, of men? And Jesus is saying, why do you disobey the commandment of God? Putting them in their place. It's beautiful. It's, it's one of those gotcha moments. Like, they just don't think. They just, you have to imagine. One is, it was one of the, the lesser uh, intellects among these Pharisees saying that, hey, and there's a group around them saying, that guy needs to not speak up because he embarrasses us when he challenges. And he's like, hey, Jesus, why do they disobey this? And they're like, oh, no, no. And Jesus just smacks him in the face. Why do you hypocrites disobey the commandments of God? All right. Uh, I don't want to dwell too much on that. Okay. Um, one of the things I've been doing lately is listening to um, some... There's a guy who has a YouTube channel. I forget what it is. But he, he goes... He has been for years... There's this, I guess it's a place in a public park in London where all these different, it's like Sunday afternoons or something, a bunch of Muslims and Jews and different people come to this place and they, they debate and they argue. And so there's this Christian uh, apologist that goes down there and he just starts shouting, you know, um, uh, calling out the Muslims in Islam and and teaching the Muslim and, and debating them and just tearing them apart. And it's, it's, it's fascinating. So I've been listening to this guy and learning about something about what Muslims believe. And in verse 28, verse 28, where is it? Uh, well, so this, this, uh, the woman starting in verse 22, a Canaanite woman, from that region. So she's she's not a purebred Jew, right? She's a Canaanite woman, right? This is that ethnic difference. And a lot of uh, one of the, I heard one of the arguments from the Muslims is like Jesus Jesus was racist or um made distinctions between ethnicities as some being superior and some being being inferior, right? They were arguing against the the character of Jesus and the morality of Jesus and Jesus calls her a dog. That's just that's 
that's horrible. That's uh, demeaning, you know, so they're, they're impugning the character of Jesus. They try to elevate Muhammad's character over that of Jesus. You know, Muhammad was a warlord and he had sex with a nine-year-old. Okay. So they're trying to compare Jesus to Muhammad or uh, elevate. And this is like all they have. This is the only, uh, this is the only uh, character assassination they have of Jesus that Jesus calls this woman a dog. And the guy that was debating says, uh, well, the word used here for dog uh, was a very common affectionate term. Like a guy may call his 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 girlfriend or his wife kitten, right? A dog is an affectionate. It, it, it was commonly used as an affectionate term. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from the table. The family pet, the one that, that is beloved, right? <laughs> Uh, and, you know, but they get hooked up on calling her a dog. And that's our sensibilities in this generation, right? We we think of, you know, word dog being insulting, and that's not necessarily what's happening here. Uh, so that was just a little enlightenment. And 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 that's an argument um, that I had never, I had never known that or heard that before. All right, I'm going to jump to Acts. Before I update you guys, I'm running out of time real quick. Acts, I, I don't need to go there. So there's this you know the the judaizers or whatever they have all these converts have to be circumcised and they have this whole council about this issue do they have to be circumcised and and uh you know it's a it's a theological issue it's a debate right they get together and they debate it and it says they debate it. they go back and forth and finally peter comes down and says you know what uh, I went, I was called to the Gentiles. God called me to the Gentiles. I had the vision of the sheep and sheep and eating the unclean food. Remember that everybody, I had that vision. And then we went over to this, we went and they received the, the baptism of the Holy spirit. We saw the spirit fall on them and they were transformed and he's pointing out and they were uncircumcised when that happened. In other words, God blessed them and brought them into the fold and he knew they were uncircumcised. So why should we think that's an issue if God didn't think that's an issue? End of argument. And so a lot of the theology uh, that we develop or that grows is like God does things and you have to extrapolate from that, right? We have our human understanding. We try to figure things out and make rules for everybody to abide by, et cetera. But we have to pay attention to what God's doing and we'll get our answers. That's what Peter you know, demonstrated here. All right. With the last minute, two and a half minutes, went to Moscow, Idaho, miracle after miracle. I go there and it's like this concentrated series of miracles, right? Because, I mean, I, I perceive it because uh, from my point of view, it's just everything is incredible. I was hosted by uh, the family, the the professor and her husband. The, um, the husband owns a, a restaurant and the professor at NSA. Uh, so they hosted me. They have three amazing children uh met these this family last time i was there and now i'm family like i just can't believe it um one of my oh, real quick overview of the book presentation she said we might get 20 20 to 30 people i'm like that'd be amazing it's this little area in the bookstore so that's what we got for the presentation and it went well there was about there were 25 people there and they were laughing and i teared up at one point and they applauded at the end and i'm like applause man and i went for an hour and there were there was a nine-year-old an 11 year old and a 13 year old there and i found out afterwards that that i don't know if it was the 11 year old or the 13 year old that said to her mother after they were leaving go, going that was a really good talk right if you got a 13 year old or 11 year old saying them like so as far as the presentation itself, it was just like hallelujah and, and uh, uh, sold 10 books out of 25 people, right? Sold 10 books, which was amazing. Um, that, obviously, there's a lot of things I want to say, but the one thing that I came away with that's the most important, actually two things. And again, probably tomorrow I'll go into more detail, but here's the one thing that uh, was really, you know, an answer to prayer. Um, I'm wanting to start, you know, a media academy to, to, I've got this book. It's actually four books. That's actually going to be 40 books. And I need to start training. And, you know, I need an intern essentially uh, that I can have. And the professor um, recommended a guy or to the guy. And, and he came, he came to the, he, he bought a book and I sat down with him for a half an hour. And he's like, I'm in, I want to, I want to help. I'm not qualified. I'm like, you saying you're not qualified actually qualifies you. And I told him, uh, make sure before you, you say yes, I have no money. 
for you. He's a master. He's finishing his master's degree. He's writing a novel. That's the master of fine arts. And he's all in. So I got like free labor, but a, a believer, a man of good character. That's now going to be a part of this thing. So that's the phrase getting a, another mind dedicated to this, to work intensively on it. It's exponent. It's good. All right. Time's up. Love you guys. See you tomorrow.